Yo, yo, it's your boy Timmy Lee Glean, and I'm coming at you with another one of these YouTube videos. Just sitting on the porch and just have some thoughts in my mind. And, um, so this one right here is, um, it's something very personal to me. A lot of these are very personal, or most of these are probably, essentially, all of them are very personal. I feel like this is probably the one I take the most personal. And,. It's crazy because it's like the moment that I started to express myself, <laughs> you know, not going along with the status quo, not going along with the narratives that they put out there, not going along with the, what I say, effeminate male culture. When, when I strayed away from that, the level of attack has increased by probably 200 percent but also what i would say is since walking in my masculine form more the level of respect is heightened as well and um even though there's a disrespect a level of disrespect for men, I believe that men that are more so masculine, um, we're not doormats. And because there's a, there's a certain man now that isn't a doormat, because I was a doormat. That's what I was. I was a weak man and I was a doormat. I was somebody that was too nice. And there's a difference between being nice and kind, but when I was nice, when I was that nice guy, when I was the doormat, when I was the one that people walked over, when I used to say sweet, nice, kind things and things that cater towards people's feelings, I was very careful of what I said. And even if I ever had an inclination to speak on things that I thought of or felt in my heart, I spent years burying a lot of the stuff that I've seen. Now, if you just as me grew up in the black community you've seen a whole lot of stuff from women or from girls that if you said you probably would have got a shoe to your head you probably would have got ostracized you probably would have got beat up but on the other end of the spectrum you probably heard a lot of things said to boys and men black men and boys and it's like there wasn't any equality in that where you could say anything and everything about the man, but you can't say nothing about the woman. And I've even realized over these last several years, you can't even hold women accountable for certain things without even being viewed as a misogynist or a woman hater, you know, just for pointing out the truth. And now it, it really isn't about who who's right and who's wrong but it's it's all in our hearts and when i express what i expressed over these years i was coming from a genuine heart and but when you're standing on bold principles of masculinity people hate that people just hate it in general you can come from a loving place but if you're pointing things out as a man they're going to hate you for it. And this is one thing that I've been learning the hard way. You know, just walking in this form, this new form. I'm calling it a form because I feel like Dragon Ball Z, I feel like I transformed into like Super Saiyan now. <laughs> walking Super Saiyan form, you know, walking out here now. And because of that, it's, it's very much noticeable and the enemy sees it. The enemy don't want men to be men. Because ultimately, we can... We can look at this in a nat through natural lenses, but this is a spiritual fight. This is a spiritual battle. There, there's a battle against men, masculinity. And this is why when you try to raise your boys up as masculine boys to grow to be masculine men, there's a level of emasculation towards these boys where they will shame masculinity in the face of boys and they'll call masculinity toxic not toxic people i mean aspects of masculinity being toxic they're calling masculinity itself toxic that's like me calling femininity toxic 
you know to be nurturing it's like calling being nurturing toxic being gentle toxic <laughs> you know and of course in masculinity there's levels to gentleness and being a masculine man and it there is levels of gentleness you know but ultimately i feel like there's this false narrative on masculinity in general and i can I could give you the spiel right now. We can go through definition terms. You can look up the definition of masculinity. It's probably going to give you something that's contrary to what true masculine is. And when we look at the nature of God, that's true masculinity right there, the nature of God. So this is why men are commanded to love. You know? um, and this was Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to give these ordinances is straight from God so when he's telling man to love woman as Christ love the church this is inspired and moved by the Holy Spirit that men are made to love <laughs> we are made to love you know just like God has has love in in himself God is essentially love and if we don't know God we don't know love so when you add the element of God's love that he shares with us and it's innately in us to want to share this in our masculine frame and nature to want to share that love and that's why men operate the way that they operate in today point me to any misogynist or point me to any womanizer a man that's sleeping with hundreds of women point me to any of them and i'll show you a woman that he loved with all of his heart or that he tried to or i could show you five to ten women that he tried that way but once you're dealing with the wrong women that's gonna put you down a road in conquest of knocking down as many women as you can you know the enemy wants men to be like that because the the more men that you have out here to hurt somebody's daughter the more women that you have to hurt with somebody's son ultimately all it is is a, a tug of war between men and women and we can point the finger at women or we can point the finger at men and we know men lead so of course men are the issue if they're not at if they're absent or they're there but not there or women as well on the other end hey how you doing how you doing good how you doing you know I first and foremost say it's men's fault. Like all these problems and issues in society, when we look at who's the ruling class of people, is men in general. So when you have wicked leadership, when you have wicked laws being put into place, there's wicked things being pushed, I say it's men. I say 100% men should be held accountable. I believe in that. And even the attack on masculinity, <laughs> I don't think it was waged by women. It's really waged by men. <laughs> now we're gonna dive in, like, and if I speak too much, we're gonna dive in the realms of people that are in certain positions that are pushing certain things that, this is why, I, it, this, this is demonic forces, honestly. There ain't no women. Like, we, we, women are being used as weapons against men women are being used as weapons against masculine men because the power is in the woman's hand as far as narrative so when we look at socially and, and who's in power socially as far as okay what what they have what they have to say really means something and then we got emasculate men emasculine emasculated men uh, effeminate men that are pushing this we have the eunuchs that are behind Jezebel and ultimately and one thing if you don't know about Jezebel Jezebel is somebody that was queen Ahab which was the king of Israel at a point in time in the BC's um, he had a wife from a different land and basically this man was a weak effeminate man that couldn't properly rule Israel he was a wicked king and he allowed his wife Jezebel to have reigns and rule like not in the position but to control the one that's in position 
and ultimately Jezebel is being used you know to underlyingly be in control under somebody that is weak and when you are a man that can see right through a Jezebel there's going to be a level high level attack I mean by the hundreds women were coming at me I know they were possessed by the spirit of Jezebel and I was wrong for it going online and that was kind of effeminate on my end like when I was doing four years ago that was kind of effeminate on my end but also I was diving in the realm of going from being effeminate to masculine and I'm dealing with a high level of attack that I never dealt with I've dealt with women always loving me I dealt with women always accepting me because I never expressed myself in a masculine way I grew up in the hood I knew a lot of people slept with lots of women why were they dealing with women like this I didn't 100% comprehend or understood until I started to walk in my masculine frame and I look back and be like wow I remember why he was dealing with women like that I remember now I know why he slept with hundreds and hundreds of women I, I know why I know why it's because the way that women are today is like you have to be a certain way you can't stick around with somebody too long or you're gonna catch feelings for the wrong woman and then 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 certain feelings of jealousy is going to pop up and envy and you're going to start looking at other men crazy because you're with the wrong woman and she's attracting this and then you're with her and then, so I, I get it just like some just and not to, this is not good to say but somewhere one night stands and just you know leave them alone after that you know some are you don't want to catch feelings for them because it's nothing but heartache and once you deal with enough women or even women dealing with enough men you already know but when we look at the attack the enemy wants to use women to steer men of God away from God and towards whatever it don't even matter it could be towards drugs or towards sex or towards watching adult films or or, or towards just not being in the word or towards not praying and being prayerful towards not listening to the Holy Spirit towards the flesh like just they're trying to draw us away and then when you stand on morals and principles that are bold and a masculine of a masculine stance of a masculine frame and form the enemy will send people not just women but women men and people that are a part of the status quo that are part of this matrix they'll send them to attack you and try to bring you down and try to discourage you and make you feel like you're even wrong for thinking like a man make you feel wrong and shameful for thinking like a man there's an attack on the nuclear family right now for that very reason because if they were properly nuclear families in the ways that God has wanted it or ordained it, it would be men being the heads of their families. It would be men leading the families. They don't want no men leadership because if you have enough male leadership, then you have less money being spent out here in these stores and being is we have less consumers wasting money and more in investing because a lot of us men, and not to say, and not to say women don't think like this, but what I'm saying is. Why is so many advertisements put out for you to buy certain things? Why is there certain advertisements? You know the billions and billions and trillions that go out, and I'm just now I'm pointing at the black community. How much we spend as consumers on makeup, hair, makeup, hair, and clothing alone. All that money that can be put into more equitable things, that can be put into things that can create an outturn in our community. But man, <laughs> our unity is a whole nother talk. And I'm not saying that it's impossible, but I'm just saying that without God, all things are impossible. <laughs> without God, all things are impossible. We need the most high for that. <laughs> to unify as a people, First and foremost, if we're not on the same page of who we are, we're not going to be on the same page on anything. Because ultimately, the men that experience the highest level of attack out of any other man on this planet, and even in the history of humanity, it has been the atrocities against the black man in America. 
and just us scattered abroad we're scattered all over so similar things are happening to other black men and even black women all around the world because I'm not trying to separate black men and black women because if I were to be honest there's an attack on femininity as well and what I mean is true femininity women are shamed for being wives women are shamed for wanting to raise their children women are shamed for wanting to stay home and take care of the house women are shamed for that and they're called slaves and they're called <laughs> it's just sad you know so in that same light and this is why there's a true attack on god's order but when we look at the head of all that it's the man so what better thing to do than to attack the boys first just like that last video, just raising your children, just they, they want to attack in the schools. They want to blur the lines between boys and girls and males and females. If you blur the line, if you blur those lines, they're going to grow up in confusion and not know who they are, not know and be geared towards a certain way and, and not the other way that they should be as God has made them or as they've been born to be. And, and once again, we all have the right to free speech and things like that. It just seems like certain free speech don't get fact checked. It seems like certain free free speech don't get flagged and, and, and taken off the internet. It seems like certain speech, even with this, this right that we have, and this is why I feel like this country is not no democracy. It's not no democracy. It's wicked and evil. Because the moment that we try to move democratically, we can't. We can't. A specific group of people that walk with God. Every other belief system, every other everybody, don't deal with the same thing that those that believe in Christ. That we, we don't go through the same thing. We a whole different breed and cloth. And that just shows, I believe, the, valid the validity. I believe this is a part of the evidence of Christ's existence, his deity. And in just overall his ministry, his life, his, the sacrifice, the remission of sins, and his resurrection. All this is true evidence of Christ right now. Christ was a true man that walked this earth. And he said, <laughs> he said himself, they hated me first. They would hate you. I, I ain't say I didn't believe it, but when it started to happen and then I read it, I'm like, wow, this is happening. So this is evidence for me as a believer. To believe even more because wow this stuff is happening so when you walk especially a man that is headed by Christ once again there's going to be a level of respect when you don't bend over backwards to a narrative anymore even if those disagree with you even if those don't want to attack you there's a little level of respect in them and that's because we all are God's creation we all are God's children essentially um, as far as creation not as far as like who's truly walking with the most high because we know those that are walking with the most high are part of the promise of Abraham you know and everybody isn't a prom part of the promise of Abraham you know a, a lot are the, <laughs> the Ish Ishmael <laughs> you know as it says in Hebrews, like some were rejected, you know, some are rejected because they reject the most high because they reject Christ. But those that accept we are children and but essentially I'm speaking about the whole human race as a whole. We're all children of God. So we have something in us that respects God, even if we disrespect and blaspheme the Holy Spirit and things like that. There's a level of respect there. I believe inwardly that people have where okay you're walking in this and you're walking boldly in it they may try to attack you or this or that that this but there are certain lines that they know not to cross spiritually they know that I don't know what I'm saying making sense to you but it's definitely making sense to me in my mind <laughs> and this is my porch therapy thing so <laughs> I believe I'm going to go back and really listen back to this and I think some things are probably going to make more sense when I listen to it. I'm just turning it out. 19 minutes. Nah, but in all seriousness, man, it's time for men to really stand up and be men. It's time for men to stand up and be bold. It's time for men... It's time for men to stop being controlled by women. 
It's controlled by the government, controlled by a narrative, controlled by children. Because men are controlled by their own children, where they can't even discipline their own children, where they can't teach their own children, where they can't raise their own children. As alluding to the last video topic that I was just recording. Men have been attacked on all sides where we are walking on eggshells in every single aspect. It don't matter what race of man you are. If you're a man that are, is walking boldly as a masculine man, most likely you're being attacked. Black, white, Chinese, Asian, or whatever Asian, and whatever Middle Eastern, whatever African. If you are a man in America right now, in this westernized culture, and you have more so Eastern philosoph philosophical, cultural things that you have, most likely there's going to be attack on you, or if not an attack, there's going to be disagreement, a high level of disagreement from, from a minority of people that controls the majority of the narrative. Because that's all this is. And I believe it's truly wicked. I believe it's wicked to attack men on this level. And it, 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 it's a wicked thing to attack women on this level because ultimately when you're attacking masculinity, you're attacking femininity as well. When you're attacking the nuclear family, when you're attacking the family life and home, when you're attacking, you know, certain philosophies that are point towards, and I'll say this, women being women because women are women. Women that are able and capable of bearing children and delivering children are women. And there are others that are not women that try to say they're women. And I guess, and I'm not here to, <laughs> you know, that's an attack on women. You can't say that you care about women, but believe that this is this and this and this. Like you, you can't care about women. You can't care about families. You can't say these lives matter. But... The clinics are being filled up and, and, and babies are being murdered by the... <laughs> it, like, this is... This is true life and this is really happening. And us men, we're going to have... If, we have, if we're the heads of our families, we're going to have a say in all this. We're going to be in the hospitals and saying, Hey, no, you're not getting that. We're going to have joint accounts and ha have accounts that say, Hey, you're not going to buy that. We're going to invest this. It, it, it's, it's going to be a level of, hey, you know, like, you shouldn't wear that outside. You should wear this. You know, because, and the more that we have, the more protection that we have over our women and over our children. And the more protection that we have over our women and over our children, the less that we can be predatorized by, by not just, like, just physically predatorized by the eyes of lustful people, but also just financially economically where we're not putting so much into the pot <laughs> of those that aren't supporting us it's like we're we're putting money into the hands of those that are oppressive <laughs> and just the further on their riches and their things and taking away from us you know and ultimately when we look at as a man I'm going to be accountable for my role in being an effeminate man and bringing children into this life as an effeminate man and the issues that came with that and that followed that. But I thank God for how he restored my situation. And I thank God for what he's done in my life. Oh, all these birds are like, what? That look raw, what they doing? Oh, they're like flying together, but like, I don't know, I never saw that before. But regardless, <sighs> you know, I just had a thought. I wonder how people think, like, in this neighborhood. I, I, I've been coming out here recording these videos. I hope I'm saying something that can strike somebody. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying isn't for the light at heart. You know, what I'm saying isn't for the weak, effeminate man either. Because the weak, effeminate man, they going to hate me. And they go, you disrespect the women. You disrespect the women. You, you know how, like, and I had effeminate men come to me as well and try to check me. And it's like, yo, bro, just, <laughs> bro, go somewhere with that. <laughs> bro, go somewhere with that woman energy. <laughs> but, you know, regardless, you know, I hope this video has 
been a blessing to you. Um, I hope this video has, 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 has sparked something in your mind. You know, men and women alike, you know, I don't want my content to be closed off for just men or really a lot of who I'm speaking to are actually more so teenagers and younger men than people my age because I'm 32. If you my age or older, you already stuck in your ways. I'm not really speaking to you, you know. This is for somebody that's younger, you know, that may need to hear what I'm saying because I've been through, I made some mistakes, you know. I've been that nice guy. I've been that guy that's always been friend zoned, you know, and uh, I've been kind to the wrong kind of women and I've I've expressed this before in other videos. I've 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 shown off my husband type qualities to the wrong women. And you know, I I went years and years and years of not even being, you know, sexually active until I was 21 and even that I didn't have that many women um compared to other men. Um, you know, I could just openly express it at 10, 10 physical partners. And even in that, you know, it is, it was done in a shorter period of time. But in the midst of that, I had three children with one person and I tried to make it work with her and as a, in a nice guy way. And I realized like, not to say I regret my other two children, I should have left after the first one and just took care of my first one. But ultimately, I thank God I have two other children. It's been a blessing. I don't even care about telling you my testimony anymore until like I make a documentary about this. But you know, ultimately I was that weak, effeminate man. I was docile. I was a beta man. I was I was somebody that allowed women to control and ruin my life. You know, even and, and drag me. I, I allowed myself to be dragged by women. I allowed myself to be controlled and manipulated by the thing that's down there. <laughs> and whatever you say and you know just allow myself to be emotionally controlled allow myself but even in the midst of that there was times I said I'm leaving I left I came back I left and I came back and I left after that and I never came back and let me tell you God grabbed a hold of me he said hey you are a man and he put principles and morals and guidelines in me by his spirit and led me to his word and led me into being a true masculine man and it's really God that did it it ain't no practice that I've done. No, this is God. It's all God. And that's what led me into the practices that I've that I've been led into, like semen retention and holding in the life inside me. Stop watching those adult films and stop doing that stuff in secret with myself and, and really just standing up and being bold and, and, and working for my family and being a provider and being a man that can protect my family and being a man that, you know, put it into my hands. God put it into my hands to be able to educate and lead my family. And to teach them the ways of God and to just keep this thing going as children are heritage of the Lord. And for me to really teach them about God. And I got two daughters and one day they're going to grow up and, you know, God willing, if Jesus don't come back, you know, they're going to have husbands. And I will want them to be a blessing to their husbands. I wouldn't want to raise girls to be hell to another man. Because I know what it's like to be through that hell. And they had to watch a lot of it. I got a son. I want him to be a mighty man. I want him to be a man that's going to lead a family. If he wants to have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten children, I don't know how many he's going to have. Or my daughters, how many they're going to have. Or they have to be with the right man to be able to do that. But if they're not the type of women that can attract that type of man or to be in position for that kind of man. So it's up to me to raise my three children in order to be those people, you know, that can raise up another righteous generation. And it's all about who we're raising up next. And there's an attack on masculinity because if you hear in my mind and how I'm thinking right now, what I'm expressing to you, you know, and in you as a young man watching this, look at the woman that you with right now. I know a lot of you are in relationships right now. A lot of you teenagers, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, maybe in college. Look at the woman you with right now. Can you build a true legacy with that woman? Can you have children with that woman that you with? Can you? Can you have a peaceful household with that woman? Can you? Or do you cringe at the thought of having children with her? And if, if that's the case, break up with her. No, I'm dead serious. You don't need to waste your time. Because ultimately, what are you doing with somebody that you're not going to build with? If you're not being intentional, and that's a part of being masculine, you got to be intentional. If you're dealing with somebody, you got to be intentional. Why are we spending this time? Why are we getting to know each other? What are we doing? 
Are we building so we can build a life together or are we just wasting each other's time until one of us either goes with another person, another man or woman? Because that's all these relationships is, is I'm going to be with you until somebody takes you from me or until I take somebody else from somebody else. And then, you know, that that's all relationships is in the modern day age. Nobody's actually intentional saying, hey, I want you. I see I see a future with you. It's not enough men being raised up to do that. Like, hey, I see qualities in you and you can be a wife. I know that. I can have children with you. If I build anything, any empire, whatever in this world, in this natural world, whatever business or whatever work I desire to do, whatever anything, I choose you to build that with. How many men are doing that? And there's lots of men that are capable, but the pool of women to do this with <laughs> is running slim. <laughs> so... You know, in the pool of men, good men, you know, and just wholesome men, men that's truly willing to lead, that's willing to be that. And also, men don't want to be that to the wrong type of woman, just like oh, the right type of woman don't want to be that to the wrong type of man. There's a disconnect and misunderstanding in both sides. and But there's a heavier level of attack on true masculinity. And... I just hope somebody heard what I said. And if not, you know, but may the most high bless you. Woo woo.